Welcome to the Tim and Lenny, Lenny and Tim podcast. Whatever this show. is, we still don't know. Actually, it's I more fun that way. Just started listening to another podcast. Who's the sponsor of this podcast? Um, I actually forgot the name of it, but it has uh, a couple of very funny people in it. I should look it up. It's very funny. But their first um, guest was Neil deGrasse Titan, Tyson. Neil oh yeah, deGrasse Tyson. Mm-hmm. And um, it the name of the podcast. Okay, I get the astrophysicist. Yes, the astrophysicist. He's cool. Um, the name of it is... Oh, where did I lose it? I lost it. I lost it. It's... um Okay. So I'm taking way too long. And whenever you have dead air on something like this, that's never very... Maybe I didn't... Hi, it. welcome. We're on week 19 while Tim looks for that. And we are <laughs> reading through the screw tape letters. And so this is a, uh, a work of fiction by C.S. Lewis, who um, is writing has written this story about two demons, uh, an uncle that is uh, bestowing his wisdom and advice on his nephew, who is a newly graduated demon from demon college that is now tempting his patient. uh, First, to try and keep him away from coming into faith, but now as the patient has entered uh, into faith, um, he is now trying to just derail and make him ineffective within his faith. And so yeah. uh, it's been a very fun read. This was written in 1940s. Yeah. Uh, it takes place kind of World War II era. So there's references to the, to the war and different things. And uh, that's kind of, that's the setting uh, we have here. The friend, we know that he's he's picked up, he's been going to one church and, or the friend, the patient, he's been going to one church. He's picked up a handful of different friends and different things. But for the most part, it's it's been more about kind of um, a general understanding of, of how to leverage humans and our, our natural kind of uh, inclinations and those things, how to leverage those things to derail us from walking forward in faith versus, um, you know, allowing, allowing faith to, like if things were just to work out without that, that interruption, <laughs> uh, we'd probably be in a much better well, place. It, and yeah. what's funny, it's interesting is Jesus was tempted mm-hmm. by the devil, you know, and that there was a, a temptation that happened externally, as well as the Bible talks about internal stuff. We can't blame everything on the devil, but there is something very real and tangible yeah. um, about those spiritual beings. Um, and so we're on chapter 19. Did we say that already? I think I got that. Yeah. Sorry. Which is week 20. And I'm just kidding. Did you and find I it? What was the name? Find it. Oh. I know. And the two main characters. Is it called Can't Touch This? No, 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 no. no it's. Oh. Um, can't find this. So the guy who played the Batman character, the voice of the Batman in the Lego movie. Oh, uh, he also plays. Will Arnett. Yeah, Will Arnett. Yeah. And then also. Babe, babe, no, babe, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's Hot Rod. <laughs> he's so good in Hot Rod. <laughs> he's just walking away and he's just standing in the car going, babe. Babe, no, no, babe, no, babe. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. So Will Arnett's Brilliant. one of the hosts, and then the other host is um, Arrested Development. Uh, oh, yeah. And, they uh, were both in Arrested Development together. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I just put that together. Yeah, because he's... Uh, uh, what is that actor's no, name from uh, Ozark? He's, Michael, Mike, my, uh the yes. other actor. People are screaming at it right now. Yes. Like I can hear them on the, the radio. The one who's, like, okay, crazy. really obscure. He's also in Dodgeball. He plays one of the announcers in no, Dodgeball. He does <laughs> not, does he really? If that's the one, he's, you know, he's he's got that real, I don't know, kind of dry sense yeah, of humor. Yeah, he's, so, he's very dry sense of humor. Yeah. He's very funny, but he also does a great job drama in Ozark. But anyways, ah. the, and it's called like the Losers Who Don't Know Anything podcast. Like, okay. It, it's very funny. And like they just interview very smart people and they're just like, we Here know we nothing. IMDb's. And We're it, doing they're it. They're very, um, It's it was, I listened to a couple episodes and was very impressed. So anyway, stop listening to mine. No, don't actually. Let's finish this one. All right. I'm going to, we're on chapter Oh, Jason 19. Bateman. Jason Bateman. Yes. I don't know why I always want to give him a Michael name. I don't know name. how I thought. Uh, it's, yes, he's oh, because he's Michael Bluth. That's why I want to yeah. call him Michael. Duh. Okay. Thank you. That's why I want to give him the Michael name. Uh, yeah. yeah, Jason Bateman. Perfect. So, chapter 19. Here we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. My dear Wormwood, I've been thinking very hard about the question in your last letter. If as, I want to read that like as if. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had too much caffeine. If as I have clearly shown, all selves are by their very nature in competition, and therefore the enemies, that's capital E, so God, right? The enemy's idea of love, capital L, is a contradiction in terms. What becomes of my 
reiterated. reiterated warning that he really loves the human vermin and really desires their freedom and continued existence. I hope, my dear boy, you have not shown my letters to anyone. Not that it matters, of course. Anyone would see that the appearance of heresy into which I have fallen is purely accidental. So it sounds like he was giving him some bad advice about love in the last... Like he moved too much into the truth, maybe. Interesting. Does that sound like what he's saying there? That does there? sound like what it's saying. So by the <laughs> way, I hope you understood too, that some apparently uncomplimentary references to slub gob were purely jocular, meaning like they were kind of benign. He wasn't meaning it to be very like harsh against sublog, slub gob, right? That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Okay. I really have the highest respect for him. And of course, some things I said about not shielding you from the authorities were not seriously meant. So it sounds like there's somebody reading their letters between one yeah. another. Yeah, like <laughs> he's just backpedaling a little <laughs> yeah. bit here. He's going. You could trust me to look after your interests, really. They're demons. Like, okay. But do keep everything under lock and key. All right, so something's going on here. So he's got to clarify something that was said in last week about this idea of contradicting in terms and dot, dot, dot. It's right here. Here we go. I read ahead. The truth is I slipped by mere carelessness into saying that the enemy really loves the humans. That, of course, is an impossibility. What? Okay. He is one being. They are distinct from him. Their good cannot be his. That statement, bam. That is huge. Their good cannot be his. And this is based on their teachings from their college and their remember so we're their their truth and their reality is going to be skewed. Like so yeah. the teachings of the school would have been that that the enemy that God does not love humans. Mm. Because because of the contradiction because they they can't be distinct from him and still be loved by him. And so the heresy from from the last letter, or, and even several letters ago, he's talking about the enemy's love for. Yes. And so that would immediately be a red flag <laughs> to someone who is like book knowledge. Yeah. Going, wait, that's heresy. You can't say that he loves humans because he's not capable of love like that. So very interesting to see him backpedal yeah. on uh, his description of God's love for for people. Well, and here is like their good cannot be his. That means human love cannot, they, like we can't, or our lo- good can never be God's good. It can only come from God, which Jesus states that actually. Only good comes from God. Yes. And Not the other way around. And the good, I think about the our benefit cannot be his benefit. Like if you get rid of, the, if you exchange the word good, like if the whole, if the whole purpose of an individual is to self-benefit, then there's there's he's saying that there's no such thing as like like love would be the highest the highest degree of love would be self benefit and so his benefit does not overlap with our benefit like his good their our benefit cannot be his benefit right. as well like yeah, it's just it not capable from, of happening right, exactly. from their perspective. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So it goes on. It says, all his, capital H, so all God's talk about love must be a disguise for something else. He must have some real motive for cre- creating them and taking so much trouble about them. The reason one comes to talk as if he really had this impossible love is our utter failure to find out that real motive. Mm. What does he stand to make out of them? This is the insoluble question. I do not see that it can do any harm to tell you that this very problem was a chief cause of our father's quarrel with the enemy. When, his, when the creation of man was first mooted, and when even at the stage the enemy freely confessed that he foresaw a certain episode about a cross, our father very naturally sought an interview and asked for an explanation. The enemy gave no reply except to produce the cock and bull story about disinterested love, which he has been circulating ever since. Like, so their <laughs> view of love is like that it just that they that that God doesn't really love people. Right. 
That it's it, a cock and bull story. That it's just, yeah. It's a, it's a pile of crap is basically what he's saying. That it's, there's some kind of other motive that exists yes. that they can't put their finger on. They can't get it. So this, it goes on, he says, this our father naturally could not accept. Mm-hmm. He implored the enemy to lay his cards on the table and gave him every opportunity He admitted that he felt a real anxiety to know the secret. The enemy replied, let's hear how he quotes God here, I wish with all my heart that you did. Think of that statement, Mm. that he says to Satan himself, I wish you would understand. That's interesting. That the secret, because the secret's not a secret. The secret is just just that God actually... Is love it, and, and loves what, us. So yeah. what this is saying that right, we know from a little bit of glimpses in the scripture about why Satan left is pride. Mm-hmm. And so pride has to understand. Mm. It has to grasp. How often are we asking ourselves, how does God love or why does God love? Or like we mm. need an explanation. And that in of itself is the danger. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm reading in this. Mm-hmm. I'm getting that too. Ooh, okay, it goes on. I was, I imagine, at this stage in the interview that our father's disgust at such an unprovoked lack of confidence caused him to remove himself with an infinite distance from the capital P presence with a suddenness which has given rise to the ridiculous enemy story that he was forcibly thrown out of heaven. So there's this argument whether he left or was thrown mm. out. Okay. Since then, we have begun to see why our oppressor was so secretive. His throne, think of the word oppressor there. Mm-hmm. Since then, we have begun to see why our oppressor was so secretive. Like, think of the demons' interactions with Jesus. Mm. Yeah, you're right. He just wrecked them. Every time. Well, they were so afraid. Like, please don't cast us to yeah. the like fire. Like, don't cast us now. Like, they saw something in a different space and time than we did. Like, mm-hmm. they saw the future already. It's mm-hmm. very interesting. Okay. So his throne depends on the secret. So there's something about a secret that they think is what is holding God to this throne. Mm-hmm. All right. So, okay. Members of his faction have frequently admitted that if ever we came to understand what he means by love, the war would be over and we should re-enter heaven. Wow. So again, it's the surrender. It's that yep. pride. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. And there lies the great task. Okay. <laughs> There's not a lot of explaining. It's just beautiful. No, it's poetic. just fun to okay. read. Yeah, this is just a fun read. Yeah. We know that he cannot really love. Nobody can. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> This is so good. Just let it speak for itself. I'm like... If we could only find out what he is really up to, exclamation point, right? Hypothesis after hypothesis has been tried, and we still can't find out. Yet, we must never lose hope. More and more complicated theories, fuller and fuller collections of data, richer rewards for researchers who make progress, more and more terrible punishments for those who fail. All this pursued and accelerated to the very end of time cannot surely fail to succeed. So what, like... <laughs> it's so funny because the answer is... He loves. They already know the answer. But they have to find the answer. But they can't believe. They're just their pride doesn't allow them to believe in that kind of selfless love. And when he's talked about it, it's heresy. So when uh-huh. he's actually talking about a way that we would agree with it, we're like, oh, we're so excited. He's like, oh, forgive me. He I got actually in trouble was, for that. Yeah, I was going the wrong way. He was, like, yeah, was, was going to be the one tormented. Uh, there. If anyone sees this, and also, you know, it's fine if they do because <laughs> it's not bad. But also, don't let anyone see this because. <laughs> Not oh, good for me. So good, dude. Very interesting. But I, I don't know. I just love it. Like, it's it's hidden in plain view. Like, yeah. if they were to really just stop trying to to explain away what's really going on, and just accept that God loves us, even that, you know, what He means by love, He says, our war, the war would be over, and we should re-enter heaven if we could even <laughs> grasp. What it means for, for, like, for God's, for what, by what God actually means as love, if, even if they were to grasp it, this idea that they would be welcomed back into heaven would be, is a crazy thought, you know? It's a crazy thought. And I love how 
Again, this is a story. Yeah, this, it's not. It's, but it's it's crazy to have those thought experiments. Mm-hmm. And I think it's actually healthy to begin to walk through those doors because what this is doing is settling that it's okay to get caught up in the mystery of the gospel, to get caught up in the mystery of God's love for us and just rest in that and be surrendered in that. And that when we try to, and again, going back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, like when we try to grasp it and explain it and hold on to it, we therefore then are stepping in and doing exactly what this enemy is trying to do. Mm. And just being, instead of just drowning in the grace. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not really drowning, but it's like that liquid oxygen. Remember that from The Abyss? Did you ever watch that? <laughs> I don't think I ever saw that. <laughs> it's like an 80s like sci-fi, but it's pretty cool. So, But like they're under all this pressure, so they have to drink liquid oxygen so they don't get crushed by the water because they're like three miles under the, the water. Oh, wow. So so they don't get crushed. It's like liquid oxygen. So they're lung- it doesn't matter. So not drowning, but also drowning. <laughs> well, they start breathing and they're fearful, and then they finally breathe it in like, we can breathe water. <laughs> weird. <laughs> liquid oxygen. That is weird. Yeah. All right, so... You complain that my last, I'm going to keep reading. You complain that my last letter does not make it clear whether I regard being in love as a desirable state for a human or not. But really, Wormwood, that is the sort of question one expects them to ask. (laughs) So in a sense, he's saying, stop thinking like a human. Yeah. All right, so leave them to discuss whether, quote, love or patriotism or celibacy or candles on altars or teetotalism or education are good or bad. So going back to that, right? Mm -hmm. Can't you see there's no answer? Nothing matters at all except the tendency of a given state of mind in given circumstances to move a particular patient at a particular moment nearer to the enemy or nearer to us. So it's one or the other is what he's saying, right? There's, yeah, that the... It doesn't really... The relationship matters more than the rules, right. is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And like the most important thing is not the rules. The most important thing is how in the in whatever present moment you can skew the relationship to move your patient further away from the enemy. Yep. And I don't know. I think that that's... We get so caught up. Uh, he says, leave that... Like, that's a question one expects them to ask. Yeah. Because those are the very things that we get caught up on. Yep. We get caught up on, should we be patriotic or... And he's saying, leave us to that. Yeah. But re- and Just that's let what them keeps do us that distracted. thing. Yeah. Right. Just let them, do, let them ask those questions. Your goal is to look in their asking and see what you can leverage to distract them yes. from the ultimate goal of growing closer to God. Yeah. That's good. Thus, it would be quite a good thing to make the patient decide that, quote, love is good or bad. If he is an arrogant man with a contempt for the body really based on delicacy, but mistaken by him for purity, and one who takes pleasure in flouting what most of his fellows approve, by all means, let him decide against love. Instill into him an over, wait, overweening asceticism, overweening asceticism, and then when you have separated his sexuality from all that might human is it, I don't know what he just said. When you've separated his sexuality from all that might humanize it. Humanize it? Humanize it. That might humanize. Oh, when you have separated his sexuality from all that might humanize it, weigh in on him with it in some much more brutal and cynical form. Okay. I'm a little aghast by what he's saying. <laughs> I don't understand it. It seems like he's saying, like... If he if he is arrogant with contempt for the body, really really based on delicacy, but mistaken by him for purity, one who takes pleasure in flouting what most of his fellows approve, by all means let him decide against love. So this idea that like I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get married, I'm not gonna pursue a relationship, I'm not gonna blah blah blah, right? Yes. If that's the case, then take it to the furthest degree possible where you've separated him and Got it. Okay. So you separated him so far from sexuality that it's no longer like humanized to him. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's in a sense, it's like let encourage them to take control of the mystery. Yeah. And just give, push the pendulum as far as it will swing. It's either left and then he's going to go on. It doesn't matter. And that's been his answer throughout the entire, the entire book. It's almost like, I think of like the new Testament. If you look Mm -hmm. at it in terms of pendulums, Mm -hmm. Paul writes to the crazy religious elites, like, you know, it's not about the rules and the laws. Mm -hmm. And he writes to those that are Christians that are like living kind of a licentious life. Like, no, it's the gospel. And he points both and back to the gospel. Like it's just go back to 
living in the mystery that God makes all things new, trusting God to make you new, trusting this spirit to produce a fruit of love, joy, peace, like go back to that. But he never gives a clear answer. It's always like, well, it depends. It depends. It depends. Like every time um, Wormwood is asking for like clarification, well, what should I do? He's like, it depends. On which way? It depends. Yeah. What's your patient like? Yeah. If he's if he's yeah. this kind of person, push him, him this direction. If he's this kind of person, push, push him, him that way. way. But it's all about swinging the pendulum yep. a direction. Oof. And the direction doesn't matter. And what's funny is we get caught up as people, we get caught up in the direction of the pendulum. We absolutely listen to this. He goes, if on the other hand, what you're talking about here, he's an emotional, gullible man, feed him on the minor poets and fifth rate novelists of the old school until you've made him believe that love, quote, is both irresistible and somehow intrinsically uh, material, uh, mer- meritorious. Meritor- uh, mer- meritorious. Meritorious. It means deserving reward or praise. Okay. This belief is not much help, I grant you, in producing casual unchastity, <laughs> but it is an incarable, incomparable recipe for prolonged, noble, romantic, tragic adulteries ending if all goes well in murders and suicides. Failing that, it can be used to steer the patient into a useful marriage. And so I would be useful for them, right? Yep. So for marriage, mm-hmm through the enemy's invitation, has its uses. There must be several young women in your patient's neighborhood who would render the Christian life intensely difficult to him if only you could persuade him to marry one of them. So Do not I, be unequally yoked yeah. is kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah, and so for years what's funny is you know working with people and teenagers and growing up is like whenever somebody gets serious about their faith and they're still single, what happens every single time? They get in a relationship and it's like, see you later. (laughs) Yeah. I could, and I always, now at this point I'm like, and I know they're a young single. I always say, Oh, you want to get serious about Jesus? Serious about Jesus? I'm like, either one of two things happen. You're going to like, your life's going to suck and you're going to like the the pendulum or like the hottest, most like person you ever want is going to come into your life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Every time it's one or the other. All right. So if you're single, I've watched a lot of people walk away from, their faith because of relationships yeah. that they've had. And, yeah. you know, it's hard because... Yeah. Well, and it's this. Those are things that we all want. I think those are things that are ingrained in us, and they're... And, they're God And God has designed those things with yeah. the best of intentions, but, you know, when you take a, a good thing and make it a God thing... Yep. We have to control it then. Yeah, then it becomes destructive for us, and, and yeah. we place the that relationship over. Yeah, it's crazy. So please send me a report on this when... Uh, uh, please send me a report on this when you next write. In the meantime, so he's wanting a report on the different women and how mm-hmm. he could persuade them to get them off, right? Okay. So, or if um, he's one side or yeah. the other. Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, get it quite clear in your own mind that the state of falling in love is not in itself necessarily favorable either to us or to the other side. It is simply an occasion which we and the enemy are both trying to exploit. Mm. Again, going back to what you said, it's a natural state that God really desired for us. Mm-hmm. I don't think God's trying to exploit it, so that's where I. Well, that would that. be the He's wanting to that would be it. the skewed perspective yes. of a demon toward God, Got right? It. Like that makes sense because God's exploitation, quote unquote, of someone falling in love would be all of the good things we read about, like last yeah. week, where we, like that leads to uh, fulfillment, y- fulfillment and unity, and, unity and, and, and learning how to serve mm-hmm. and giving of yourself and all those. Yeah, you know. the refinement of yep. the self. Yeah, yeah. like most <clears throat> of. The other things which humans are excited about, such as health and sickness, age and youth, or war or peace, again, pendulums, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it is, from the point of view of the spiritual life, mainly raw material. So Mm -hmm. what they're saying is is that all these crazy pendulums is just... It's just enticing the heart one way or the other, something that's going on in the soul. Yep, and it's it's all just there to be leveraged to to their end, you know? Wow. You know, this chapter, we're at the end. I just finished this chapter 19. Um, there wasn't a lot of commentary needed on this one. Um, and it was the correction of all those other theologies that we got uh, all excited about. And remember that was times I was like, how is this demon saying this or recognizing yeah, right? this truth, right? And he's and going, I like, uh, actually was not supposed to say that God loves people. <laughs> and by That's, re- That sounds like it's a foundational doctrine of like them is <laughs> yeah. like that God does not actually love yeah. his creation, yeah. that he's just, he has an alter ulterior motive yeah. uh, that we just haven't figured out yet, and, but we're at, working on it. At some point, they'll figure that out. Yeah. yeah. No, that's crazy, dude. That was a good chapter. I really enjoyed it. was a lot of fun. One. Wow. I don't know. If you uh, enjoyed that chapter, let us know. Do you have anything else to say on it? I don't want to end it. If you don't have anything Gosh, to say, I don't know. I There's, like... I, There were some cool 
kind of things to think through. I think when he was talking about swinging the pendulum and either making love, like just being super cynical about love and relationships and, and so staying away and like looking down on others because of them, um, or swinging it the other way and the pursuit of love then causing all kinds of destruction in, in his life. Um, and he said, usually it doesn't happen, but you know, he reads, or he says, uh, but it's an incomparable recipe uh, for prolonged noble romantic tragic adulteries ending, if all goes well, in murders and suicides. And I just can't help think but like Romeo and Juliet, you know, like like the tragedy of like two star-crossed lovers that then, because their families are feuding and all that, like, like l- allow their love for one another to just go you know, fine, we're going to, yeah, cool. we're going to end it. Love you know what I mean? Right, yeah. Um, but it's, but if you take it to that nth degree, it gets there. You know, it's, as you're talking, like, as they're talking about like, you know, they said like, uh, all of these things, these paradigms, like most other things, which humans are excited about, such as health, sickness, youth, wage, war, the point of view, of spiritual life is only raw material. Like I'm, I'm really looking as I'm, cause we're studying through first Corinthians to mm-hmm. kind of, we're going to talk through that over the next few weeks, months, like probably. with the church. Yeah. yeah. Um, but even before that, though, I've been really discerning a lot in my own life because even just preaching through a few things we've just talked through, like reading through like Second Timothy, and has a long list of things in Second Timothy about like the carnal life. You hear that word all the time, especially growing up as a kid, like there's mm-hmm. these carnal things. And so often the church, it's then the focus is to not do those things, right? It's yeah. like the, the the church is like there to help you not be carnal. Yeah. And it's constantly that's like this focus of like running from it, like run from evil. And the mm-hmm. scriptures talks about those things, but really I kind of had this epiphany that. Epiphany or epiphany? Apostrophe. Okay, perfect. Um, light bulb went off. Um, as I keep studying through Scripture and hearing, you know, w- reading through the narrative of, of, of redemption happening from Genesis to, to, to Revelation and how we just keep humans just mess it up all throughout history, that those behaviors of themselves are simply the fruit of of a deeper thing that is broken within our souls. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at those lists of do not be, you know, anxious, do not give into sexual desires, don't lie, don't be covetous, you know, all these things that God says don't do, Mm -hmm. it's supposed to mirror to go a mirror that we go, Oh crap. When I'm behaving that way, there's something broken in my soul. And my job isn't to fix that. Just like, you know, when, when we see God says, live out your life. So there's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And one is creating heaven on earth, and the other one is creating hell on earth, mm-hmm. and in us and through us. And so in that place, when one of those two fruits, so anything in my life, I was angry last week, like crazy angry, and I thought I was justified in my anger, and mm-hmm. I brought it home, and it had nothing to do with what was happening at home. It was a work thing. And I was like, and I felt it like... it. My whole family was being affected because of it, yeah. but I was justified in my anger. But what was being produced wasn't love, wasn't joy, wasn't peace, wasn't patience, wasn't kindness. So therefore then, that's it was not rooted, that anger was not rooted in when the Bible says, be angry and do not sin. Yeah. I was sinning. Yeah. And so I had to look in hmm. and kind of discern those things and then walk through, not trying to fix it, but just holding out into the light. Mm-hmm. and recognize that, and it went through the people I need to go, okay, Lord, I've sinned against you. I don't know what to do about this. I felt justified in my anger because of dot, dot, dot. And so same with these things where I look at like these behaviors in our lives. is like, okay, so often the church is like, okay, fix, 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 fix. But the reality is, is that God fixes. It's this paradox of surrender, like we talked about. Like if God is love and he wants to make, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So I think it's good in a lot of ways when we're honest about the struggles of these things. Mm. And not just trying to fix it, like being okay with just bringing it out in the open and go, okay, if you produce love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, goodness, then let me take this thing that isn't doing that and give it to you. Yeah. Because I don't know how to do it outside of you. When I try to take control of it, it's just another root of something that looks holy. Yeah, it's whack-a-mole. Yeah. You hit one and then the other one pops up. And it may feel more righteous according to what the church at that time is deemed righteous, but it's really not because it's rooted in what they're talking about, this this control. Mm. Yeah, going along with that idea of, you know, kind of creating lists of things, you know, you look at, you look at the church's response to um, the LGBTQ community plus plus um, community, and um, I don't know, kind of the tension that exists within the church, yeah. not only in in how we, I say we, how the church itself has. Um, 
loved and or not shown love toward toward those that are in that community. Yeah. Um, but also how then the church is at is at odds with itself over the response to Ooh, yeah. those that are within that community, yeah. right? And whether like do you do you should someone who's gay like be a part of it? Can someone who's gay be a part of the church? Mm-hmm. That's a big question. Mm-hmm. And if so, to what degree? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that there's been a lot of really, really, really unhealthy responses to that, like, like culturally, like was, has been leveraged. And, but I think that there's also like this line of like, but what about the truth in love? And what about like, what about these things? And so I was having a conversation with a friend, um, and we were talking through these things and he said something that like kind of shook me a lot in my worldview and kind of my like growing up, not growing up, but being so embedded in like the Southern Baptist church and, and just kind of like those viewpoints. Um, and I think, again, we make it about the things mm-hmm. instead of looking at like the heart. Mm-hmm. Um, but in making it about the things, we've created this list of like what's acceptable and what's not. Mm-hmm. So we can have an alcoholic or we can have like, like, Closet alcoholic mm-hmm. or closet, you know, or like so many Let's rephrase super... the word we because that's not me. Right. The, <laughs> ch- the church, right? Like the, in general, the American it, institution called the church. The yeah, tr- yeah, yeah, exactly. When I say we, church. like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the American institution that. of the church, yeah. um, you know, has has a list of acceptables and a list of unacceptables. Right. Do's and don'ts, right? Yeah. Well, even within that, w- within the gray area, yeah. we go, okay, well, this side of gray area is like uh, this person's a womanizer and a bully, a bully or and a jerk. Yeah. Or a jerk is. or prideful or, you but know, we're X, Y, and Z, person. but they're meeting a need that, that we need met and we can kind of sweep the other stuff under the rug and ignore it yeah. because it's, it's, it fits within the institutions like socially acceptable and culturally acceptable norms, norms. what they say is normal. Yeah. Or like versus acceptable. like someone who is gay, right? Mm-hmm. That would be an excellent that is that is pursuing Christ and pers- and like I'm not read up or studied yeah. up enough to really be able to speak to this the way that so if I'm not an ambassador and or speaking to things, I'm just acknowledging that right now. Yeah. But like I've started to kind of think through like, well, what does it look like to have a gay Christian in the church or a Christian who's gay? Yeah, I guess that's the, the. I don't know how to phrase it even, right? But what like, I'm just saying, like, gay, that, like, like I would say, like even in my own life, like. Well, and then you bring up like the you, word like struggles with homosexuxuality, and you're like, no, I, well, I, the, now automatically you've just by how you phrased what, it, now you've you've isolated. Yeah. You don't, we don't say Christians who struggle with pride. You no, know what I mean? And it's that's like, what I'm saying. It's like I'm I'm a Christian who is arrogant, prideful, mm-hmm. and I hate those things about myself, mm-hmm. and I try not to practice them. Mm-hmm. And when it comes up, like we're talking about those fruit, I don't then, I used to try not to do them, try and mitigate or try and put veneers and faces. And I realized like, no, like God wants to, he wants to give me a spirit in my life, the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, which produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. When my identity is rooted in being loved by God through Christ. Mm-hmm. And if I'm surrendered to that and mm-hmm. I don't control the rest of it and mm-hmm. trusting God to make all things do and redeem all the crap. But it's that all a process too. And yeah. the future. Yeah. And that, cause so often we judge people based on the now, not the trajectory or the could be's. Like how many yeah. people do you know that got saved when they're like 30 or 40 years old mm-hmm. who look back and go, God was in my life at that point. He was there then. He was there then. Mm-hmm. Was God not there just because they recognized that Christ was in the like, mm-hmm. like th- it's a, like, I, so you're but, absolutely yeah, right. Like but there's, there's this tension. like, there's a lot more subtlety and I think there's a, it's, it's going to take a lot more than the next couple of minutes as we talk about this yeah. and wrap up. But but here's kind of the general idea that I left with that my okay. that my friend had pointed out. Um, it was uh, Louis. Okay. We were having this conversation. Hey, Louis. And, yeah, right? If you're listening, like, <laughs> he's like, hey, that was me. But it really, like, it caused me to start thinking, not like to reform or like anything at that grandiose level, but like in the way that I interpret the world and that I'm looking at the world through this lens, he said, if, when I get to heaven, I would rather God... I would rather get in trouble for being too accepting than being too um, condemning. Damn. Yeah, and it, like, like, like I would rather God, you know, say you you brought in too much versus you kept out too many. Mm. You <laughs> you drew the line too far, and of course now there's like 
and I don't think it's really my line to draw anyways, no. yeah. you know, I think let other people, re- but it caused me to think differently about the world around me and about like how accepting I am of those that are different than me. And I try to be open-minded and accepting and those kind of things. But it, this, that phrase really reframed, I accept them, but only within the parameters that I create for them. Yeah. I accept people, but only within the parameters that I've created well, for them. Well, think about that. Let's, let's internalize that. Uh-huh. How often do you not accept yourself? I don't know. <laughs> no, but if you're <laughs> really honest that, about like, it, how many times do you draw lines in your own life of whether or not God mm, will accept you or not? Yeah, that's fair. Okay. That's what I mean by mm-hmm. that. And so we take that same lines that we draw going back to this and definition project of them onto we project other people. to everyone yep. else. And I don't care what gender or what homosexual identity right. they have or whatever that is, we're going to project that out. And yep. so it has to first start. Jesus said, take the log out of your own eye before yep. you take the speck out of the other. And that log is those lines that we start to draw. Yeah. Like, and so, but I think it becomes that it's the pendulum yeah, totally that we is. that we're able to point to, to these pendulums it. and we go, okay, yep. yeah, we exactly. Have, have this neat, tidy little box and God loves the mess, dude. And I, That's th- what but, I just keep reading through this thing. Like it's, it, it's, it, I just, the but we more look more. at, like for me, I'm thinking through how we look at people on the ends, on the pendulum yeah, ends, on the and we go, too late for you, not my problem. No. You know, that's where the line is drawn. That's where the line, and I say we, like kind of like the institution of the church or like people's experiences with Christians, right? The lines are are drawn past this. You know what I mean? Where really, if I'm going to stand before God and account for how I treated those that are made in his image, which is everyone. Yeah. Am I, am I going to st- like the decision that I make and how I treat and interpret and think about people, is it going to be with the best of hope and the best of intentions or am I coming at them with cynicism and have I, have I already made decisions so, about their trajectory yep. before, you know, have I, have I already made that decision when it wasn't mine to so make? So listen to these words, right? Love covers a multitude of sins. Mm-hmm. Love has hope. Mm-hmm. Right, love is patient. It's kind. Love, uh, uh, it, it it always hopes. Mm. Always right. Think of those words with that, and then so I think through the story of the Good Samaritan, mm-hmm. right, and how far this Samaritan went out of his way to care for this person out of compassion and gave them mercy, put them on and cared for them. They didn't draw lines, and the reason why I think about that scripture is because I think that that Good Samaritan was in the same position that that person was. That which person was? The one who was beat up and laid on the side of the road. Oh. They knew what it was like to be the one half dead on the side of the road. But even if they didn't, that someone can be moved with compassion for someone else. That's And that you know is I mean? only miraculous. Yeah. It's only God working within our hearts. Mm-hmm. And so are we and do we have this those eyes, compassion? Once I really am just, I agree with you. Like, can yeah. we start to explore those questions of, because if I can't control and behave myself into heaven, mm-hmm. I can't. Right. That's I can't the behave, whole purpose of oh, Jesus. Did we not just read last week or in this one, their good cannot be his. Mm. Just think about that phrase in reference to what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Our good is not God's good. Yeah. Period. And if, if we think of like infinite good and we're finite, mm-hmm. we can never be infinite. Like, like we can never no, reach that. No, we're already but infinitely broken, us, yeah. And if we look at Ephesians, like, can we wait for the good works he prepared beforehand for us? Mm, and that's the in, journey yeah. in pursuit of him, that then that's the overall product. But so often we have to, we in general sense, and I, this is the practice I'm having to work out of my own head, mm-hmm. is... Do I trust God working in the other as he's working in me? Right. Enough for me to hold my hands open and not make the judgment of, you know, like you feel a prompting of the spirit that you should go share the gospel with someone. And you look at that person, you go, you make that, you make the, you make the decision before you've even made the action. And it's like, I need to stop making decisions and start making actions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think the, the pendulums as we're talking about, you know, all of these different things, um, the pendulums allow us to justify not acting. And I think that yep. that has irked me. That has bothered me about myself lately. Is like, mm. I've allowed my perspective of people on the fringes of the pendulum yeah. to keep me from acting in either direction toward them and making a judgment saying, you know, essentially that they're not worthy of mm. my time or my effort to share with them that which they are deserving to know, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and so 
I, I so yeah. this week I was just talking about because we're talking about love, you mm-hmm. know, love loving Christ. That mm-hmm. was literally what we talked about. And I what I realized was is that, you know, there's the I don't know if you know this, so like whatever Isaac Newton, he has a science of motion where mm-hmm. every for every action there's equal An opposite. reaction, opposite yeah. of reaction. Well, he also came up with an emotional one. Did you know that? No. He states the exact same statement for emotions. So for every emotion, there's an equal and opposite reaction to that same emotion. Oh, okay. So then I took that same exact thing and applied it to the spirituality. Mm. You're like a regular Isaac Newton. Uh, no, I'm not. No. But what I said was, is like, and it's got, this is what Jesus says, right? love the Lord God, the heart, mind, soul, and strength, which is not separate. They're all intertwined right. completely. And equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. And so we cannot love to the extent by which we understand God's love for us. Mm-hmm. It is exactly the same. So when we're... It's replicated out. That's period. It can't go... We can't love somebody else more than our understanding of how much God loves us. Mm. So those pendulums you're talking about, those the, the, the desire you have to go to those fringes that you have not allowed yourself to, you need to feel God's love in those fringes yourself to yep. be able to reach that far. Yeah, to allow it to feed down into me and then view those fringes through through that love because that's the love that I'm receiving. That's it. That pushes it forward. And until we can live in that place, going back to that Samaritan, how I think he understood it at a deeper level... Now go and do the same, Jesus says at the end of the story to the Pharisees and the Sadducees when they're mm-hmm. asking about it. Like, the, it, Understand how much you've been loved to give that love away. And the deeper we grow in the understanding of God's love for us, mm-hmm. the further that love can flow through us. Mm-hmm. That, is, that is how that extends out. Mm-hmm. But we so badly, going back to this, want to control that experience. Yeah. Therefore, then we want to control the experience with other people and we draw those lines. Mm-hmm. And now we see in scripture and we go and there's these list of things because the reality is, is God's warning is like you have the choice to create heaven on earth or hell on earth, both in and through you. And he goes, because like when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what came? It was death. The wake of death. It wasn't just the experience of that moment till death, but it was a wake. Their children experienced murder and ge- like hell and then genocide a couple generations later. Like mm, it's insane yeah. what happened because of the choices. And that is the 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 wake of those choices. We experienced the exact same thing from generation to generation to generation. And until we go back to this, the pen, we just surrendered in God's love, bask in like the mystery of the gospel. And in that place, God produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And when our behavior in life is opposite of that, which is hell on earth, which is the whole list of all these sexual control, you know, us taking control of that definition, mm-hmm. dude, that's, that's not the gospel. We're yeah. living outside of, we're living in religion. That's what, you know, this is back and forth. It's the pendulum, going back to that pendulum, right? Yeah. And I think that all kind of stemmed from, you know, the re, you know reading tonight yeah. about, it's really just religious do's and don'ts that, that people are pushed to and yeah. then constrained by. And as someone who tends to stand in the middle, mm-hmm. I feel like looking either direction, I'm like, I'm at odds with either direction versus like, if you're on a far side of either side, you're at odds with the middle and the furthest direction. You know what I mean? So like there's always, you're always at, at odds with each sure. other. I never thought of it like that. Yeah, But that like sense. standing in the middle, I'm like, okay, you're too far over there. You're too far over there. Yep. Where are my middle people? But there are people like on one side that are like, uh, you're too far in the middle and you're way too far on the other side. And there's a judgment that's going uh, on both. Yeah, but Because always. we have to control yeah. it. Yeah. And so yeah. it's not From being in any one of those things. places. Could we just be flattened under it? Like let them all walk on me. And that's really yeah. hard to do, to be honest. You know? Or let me let me not look down at them for having a different perspective. And I think that's hard. It's that's, there's, that a, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think, so. though, it's like, again, surrendering and kind of digging deeper into how much God loves us. Like, they're talked about this, like, literally this last chapter. is like, it's it, he can't. It's unknowable because, like, there has to be a motive behind it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, just... Stop. Just stop. Just, Just stop, stop and accept it. Just yeah. accept it. Yep. And that's what we encourage you. If you, you know, um, we almost ended it that we kept like we went Dude, who super knows? deep. Yeah, Just we <laughs> just, I don't even know if anything actually just happened. <laughs> um, but you know, if you want to know more about like this, this tension that we talked about and living in this paradox of just like surrender, like it's funny. It's like the more I'm recognizing and realize, like when I have these like these big paradox questions, mm-hmm. like I just stop answering them, and there's peace in that. And yeah. It's not that I want to be ignorant. It's, I actually dig in on both. It's fun ends. to dig through these things but at the end of the day you have to put it down and walk and away and am i going to let it control me yeah you have to put it, it down and walk me away and or we are trying to control it both either one of those mm-hmm. we're in trouble yep. you know so anyways may god's grace and peace be with you and we'll see you guys next time adios